I did find at its heart a, a touching love story and compelling love story as well as a character study of a global figure who we all think we know. Um, I believe you both had a lot of reservations initially. What, what were they and what was actually the pull of this material that made you have overcome the reservations? Um, well, the reservations, the, the, this my, lady had the reservations. Mine, yeah. I didn't have any reservations. I read it, I had no idea about Diana. I never really cared about her. I read the script and I knew I wanted to do it. And then? Came to me. And uh, yeah, that was, um, yeah, the idea of it was, was scary, right, you know, well before I read the script. Um, you know, the conversation between me and my agent, I was, well, I'm not sure about that. Um, the most famous woman of our time, as you say, as everyone feels they know her. And so how do you take possession of a character that is belonging to so many people? So, yeah, that was, that was scary. But all those reasons that scared me became, you know, part of the intrigue of doing it. Um, during the Panorama interview with Martin Bashir, some of which you recreate in the film, um, she says at one point the fairy tale had come to an end. And at what point do we meet Diana in the film? Which, which period do you, do you cover in the film? Well, we meet her when she is officially separated from Charles, not uh, divorced yet. And she's come sort of to a point of standstill. She doesn't quite know what to do with her life. And she's pr pretty lonely because lots of her friends, she sort of cut off and she's sort of looking for something and that comes when she meets this man Hasnat Khan, this doctor and I think they they, disc they recognized each other as like sort of like soulmates or something like that and start this love affair, a very deep, passionate serious love affair which transforms her and makes her a new woman, like a uh, like the, that Diana that we kind of remember like from the from the last months. And earlier in the film we see a beautiful shot of um, Diana as you play Naomi sitting in the Royal Opera House alone um, in, in a box and it gave me a you know real sense of her isolation um, although she's adored by millions so there's obviously a, a paradox there. How intriguing did you find that aspect of her? Well yeah that's the thing is that um, someone that's that famous um, is uh, is living has to be living a, sh a fairly sheltered and protected life um, because you, you, there's n no spontaneity just walking out and wandering down the streets and picking up dry cleaning and stuff that that's that's not possible for her um, and I think that comes with a price missing out on those sort of meaningless experiences that actually you know so I think that that was part of my fascination with with her and how she survived that and ultimately obviously the tragic engine ending. And how about finding um, her voice and her mannerisms? I believe yes, you right. studied the uh, Martin Bashir interview and yeah. listened to it about a Obsessive thousand times. Yeah. I believe, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what, what really helped you sort of find the, the essence of, of her as well as the, um, you know, I suppose the outside things? Yeah, I mean that interview became my um, play mi mix for um, for all the weeks leading up to it and and I would find myself watching it just the visual with the volume down so I could really focus on expressions and then just listening to the, the voice in my ear um, it was incredibly helpful because it was kind of the most candidly she spoke albeit knowing that there was a camera in the room um, yeah I, ultimately that helped me with the voice and the expressions and then lots of other available footage but all the stuff that went on that we filmed in the Kensington Palace was open to interpretation um, and once I had the voice I you know, felt like we could create her in our version of her with the facts supporting the film and the story. What do you um, feel her legacy has been? We see some figures at the end of the film about her impact on landmines, but I think it was probably wider than that. What, what would you say, Naomi? Well, yeah, I mean, Paul Heslop goes down on record saying that what she achieved in those short, in that short period was more than they'd achieved in, in two decades. And so that's, that's pretty monumental. Um, at the time, we, in, in, the late, um, in the early 90s, we didn't know much about AIDS. Um, and she was the first one to be seen holding very sick people and um, so she, she achieved, achieved a lot with just her empathy alone and her level of compassion. Um, I think 
she had a real sense of the healer in her. She wanted people to get better, and I think that was also a reflection on, on herself, who she was. She was someone who was always trying to heal herself too. Amy Watts, Oliver Hirschbeagle, thanks very much. Thank you.